Welcome everybody to another lesson on the Purdue Clock Tower tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to make a PBR material from a single image. Uh, we've gone over stuff like this before in the brick tutorial, tiling brick, but in this one what we're going to do is we're going to look at the underside of this clock tower, which you can see this is the bottom of the clock tower, this is looking upwards. And this is a perfect example to show how we could just use Photoshop and a little bit of Substance Designer to perfectly replicate this, this basic panel right here. And basically I have a closer picture right here that we're going to use a uh, different millimeter lens that I used on this one. Um, but this is, we're only at 26%. If I blow this up to 100%, you can see how close we can get and how much detail we have. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just basically in Photoshop, hack this thing apart into layers that we could use for making a complete material. So you can see right here, what I have showing is this is the height slash normal map that we'll be making in the end. So it's basically like grayscaled. And we're going to use this information to create a normal map in Substance Designer. And, uh, and then of course, we're going to use some of the other information that we can get and extract from this within Photoshop to create uh, metalness uh, maps and, and lights and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and look at Substance Designer. I'll back it off here a little bit so you can kind of see this. Maybe pull this up. So if we, uh, if we go in here and we change the lighting around a little bit, you can see how you know the metal kind of shines. Um, I could probably put a little bit more into the bump right now. Um, it's not looking like super bumpy, but it's sort of it's enough uh, because this is going to be sort of uh, up in the top. No way to probably really see this too close uh, when we create this and put this in a game engine. But uh, I thought it was a perfect panel just to teach a bunch of lessons and tools in Photoshop. So really just go along with me on this journey for learning uh, how you would do this because these kind of uh, panels like this and single textures where you could use Photoshop, uh, this actually come up a lot. So um, if we look at this, this is like, this is actually just the color image uh, straightened out. And uh, and then this is the normal map coming from the bump. Um, let me double click on this. We could actually see it down here. Maybe a little bit noisy still, but uh, we, you know that's something we could work on. Uh, here's the roughness pass. Um, the cracks are where this uh, bright white is. So if we don't want that to be, uh, if you don't want the cracks where they actually come out black turn looking shiny, you have to drop something in there. So that's why that looks like that. So it's kind of a combination. I'll show you how to make that in Photoshop. Um, we have a metalness pass. So I did this through selective color in Photoshop and then just made a metalness pass. I check it in here just to make sure it looks good. Uh, and then of course an ambient occlusion that we have. I probably want to feed a, a different texture in there actually. Um, because I have a, a better one now that I can pass through uh, that has a little bit less contrast in it. Uh, actually, maybe this is the same one. I take that back. That's the same one, uh, but we'll we'll lower the contrast a little bit. Um, we have a height pass. This, this also works as a height. And then I made an emissive pass, basically. Um, this is just emissive level, and then this is like the actual emissive. Um, you know, you could use either one of these as a, a light pass. It depends on how it looks in level. So uh, yeah, that's it. Um, that's basically what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go through all these different layers uh, and show like how these were made in Photoshop. Um, really good skills to have because uh, you know there's a there's a still a lot of use for Photoshop. Uh, people might think that like oh we have Substance now we don't need Photoshop, but that's not true. It's actually really really important to understand how to use some of these tools in Photoshop. So that's what this tutorial is about. It's going through uh, tools in here so we can make you know. A, a basically a map from an image. So, all right, come along with me on this journey and we will be smarter on the other side. All right, in this first part, we're just going to learn a little bit about free transform and cropping and, you know, rulers, some minor tools that we might be using, or you can consider a major because we use them all the time. Uh, first off, I want to just note that I am using a 16-bit TIFF for this. Um, I took the original picture and I exported it as a 16-bit TIFF. 
so that I could retain more gradients. So if you look in your image mode, it's 16 bit. If I made it a JPEG, it would definitely be 8 bit. Um, so I opted for this because I wanted it to be higher quality. All right. So first thing I want to do is I want to basically trim this a little bit and rotate these this uh, edges so that the edges fits you know perfectly square inside of here. Eventually we're going to end up with a 2048 by 2048 texture. That's what I've uh, decided for this one. Um, you know it's it's rather large for one panel, but you could always uh, reduce the size. So the first thing I think about is we have our rulers out. So I'm going to hit Control R. So you can see the rulers get hidden or they come out by hitting the same thing. Uh, Control R is a toggle. And so all I have to do is left click in here and drag out. And I'm gonna just drag these out so that we can establish basically kind of a square shape that will help us to rotate this a little bit. And so I'm gonna go like that and just click in the, in the ruler area, drag out like so. And now I'm gonna make a copy of my background layer just because I like to work on a copy and I just drag it down to this little plus. This is going to make it a new layer. So we drag that down, make it a new layer, and then we'll get into the free transform tool. Uh, I always use the hotkey for free transform. So it's control T. So I'm just hitting control T. And then when you pull the, this out, you'll see like there's uh, the tool will make this little border around here and there's these little boxes. And if you, if you click and drag in there, uh, it'll change the size. I'm going to hit Control Z. Um, it's by default locked to 100% uh, on both the height and width. So as you change it, it changes the height and width the same. Uh, so if you hit Control Z, you can undo that. But if you hold Control uh, or Shift, you can actually crunch it. Control Z. If you hold Control, you could actually uh, skew it like so. And we'll actually be using that in a little bit. So. Uh, all right, so now we've got that all figured out. What we don't have figured out is how do we rotate this? Well, if you go over the corners here, you'll notice that the arrows that pop up turn into kind of like a right angle. And once you have that, if you just left click, you can rotate and just kind of rotate, rotate that around. Now what I'm looking at here is I'm just kind of looking at my top edge right here and I'm trying to align the top edge so it's nice and straight. Now this panel might be a little bit warped or maybe my picture wasn't taken completely square. So it might not be 100% perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and alter it a little bit to make it a little bit better. Uh, so what we need to do though, now that we've rotated this is we need to either hit this check mark here or we can hit enter on our keyboard to confirm that we want this rotation. So I'm gonna hit enter and it'll confirm it. And now that's locked in. And so we could see if we look at this closely, we're pretty close. We can always rotate it again. But what I want to do now is I want to actually just crop out this extra information that we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crop using the crop tool, which is right here. Or you could just hit C on your keyboard. I prefer to use the, the keyboard shortcuts. When I crop, I'm going to hold shift and it's going to crop it to a perfect square aspect ratio. So if I, if I want to just like pull out, I can get anything like this. You can go in any, any aspect ratio you want, but if you hold shift, all of a sudden it will pop back to a perfect square. And for right now, I'm just going to crop around the green edges that I made the uh, green guides, uh, because I just, I'm going to alter this a little bit more to make sure it's perfectly fitting in. Uh, now these green guides might not be a, at a perfect square. So let's go ahead and make like a perfect square within the green guides so that we can uh, find out, you know, how far they are from being square. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Just click on the new layer and I'm going to click on my marquee tool here. And I should have my snaps on usually by default. Photoshop has your snaps on. So if you go up to view and look and if this is checked, then um, as you're drawing your marquee out, uh, you should be snapping to the edge of this green uh, little box right here. And I'm going to click right here and I'm going to hold shift. So I'm going to click. You can just like with the crop tool it works the same way. Once you hold shift, it'll pop to a square aspect ratio. And I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and just let that go like that. And now I am going to actually fill this with uh, the background color here. And I'm going to tell you the shortcut for that because I use this all the time. And to fill with the background is control delete. To fill with the foreground color is alt delete. So control delete and alt delete will <clears throat> fill these. And otherwise you have to go into your fill here and, and that just takes too long. So 
we're going to learn how to do that uh, right away. We're going to work on a lot of different hotkeys, so our workflow is a lot faster. Uh, so you can see it actually went past this right here, but it will keep this perfectly square. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop the uh, the selection. So that's Control D. We'll we'll deselect. So now we don't have that selection. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just get my move tool, which is V, and that's this little move tool at the top here. And I'm going to use my arrow keys, and I'm just going to click over and just get that aligned right there. And we'll pull this over here. I'm just using my uh, pan tool, so I'm just holding my uh, spacebar down. And we can see here, when you have your move tool out, you can actually move these green uh, guides. So I can go ahead and just slide that out like that. If your color guide is, if your guide color is different than mine, that's okay. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can just double click on the guides and change the color. All right, so let's see, make sure that these are all aligned. Okay, that looks good. So what we're doing though now is just making sure that the, the guides are perfectly square. So they should be perfectly square. And so now when we align this part to the guides, it'll it'll be perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and we can actually crop one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just crop a little bit closer so it's easier to see. So I'm gonna hold shift, just start outside of the guides a little bit and then just drop it to there. When I hit enter, it basically just cuts off everything that's outside of that box. So that information is now gone, unless we hit undo. And now what we wanna do is we're going to use this layer and basically just do the free transform and adjust this so it's sitting just inside this little area. So I'm gonna hit Control T on the keyboard. And this is where I was saying we're gonna, we're gonna do the uh, distort tool, which is actually by holding Control and you'll see here if you right click in this in the uh, frame here when you have your uh, transform already selected you get these different sections uh, that you can you can choose these different selections um, and distort is the one we're going to use but you, you can shortcut that by holding control and basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this so that the panel just goes right to the corner like that and I'm going to hit enter there we go so I like to drop the tool between every time uh, I do this. So then that way I don't um, try to do one movement and then I'm skewing something on the other side of the, the image. So I'll go ahead and just keep hitting control T holding control and I'll hit enter, drop the tool and then I'll go back up to the top and do the same thing. You can see up here, it's like, it's kind of way off. So control T, hold control. And we'll just do that little adjustment there, get it right in the corner, hit enter, and we should be good to go. And let's just check the last side here. This one's pretty close. Control T, hold control, and move this little box down a little bit like that, hit enter. And then just double check and make sure that all of the other ones stayed inside and they didn't skew outside of it. They all look pretty good to me. Yep, looks good. Okay, so now we can actually crop crop to the to the green. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit my C button again. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just, I should just be able to crop right to this. I should snap right to it and it should be perfectly square. We'll check that in a second. So now that we've done that, hit enter. And now we should have a perfectly square uh, texture so I'm going to hit control alt I another shortcut and that's going to give us the height and width it's just going to show us that if you want to see that on your own uh, you know it's in the menu you can go over here to oops let's see image and it should be image size image rotation image size there you are alt control I same thing um, there's always a shortcut that ties to something here in the menus but I always give the shortcuts because you'll just work a lot faster if you work that way. Uh, and you could see this is a pretty big file and that's because of the fact that we have this at 16 bit. If it was 8 bit, it would be a lot smaller. But we're gonna extract like height map information from this. So we want to have the extra gradation in there that comes with a higher bit depth. So I'm gonna hit okay there. All right, so what's next, what's next? We don't need this top layer anymore. Um, you know, we can keep it around if we want to, but why? Okay. Um, that's basically the ins and outs of free transform. 
Uh, I'm going to show you that you can take the guides and just move them off if you want by just dragging them out like so. So I'm on the move tool and the move tool is kind of your access to messing with the guides. And um, now that we've done that, I'm going to show you one more thing. Actually, I should have kept that layer in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a marquee selection tool. So hold shift if you want it to be perfectly square. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this, alt delete. So I just want to show you like what all these different uh, free transform tools do. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to say uh, the scale is the, the normal one that, that comes up by default. I'm going to go ahead and obviously rotate, you know, that one uh, skew. Uh, skew basically will move uh, the edges on one axis, like on the X or the Y axis, basically. You can hit Control Z to undo it. Um, the distort, that's what we were doing by holding control. So we can do that. And perspective is, is actually cool. Um, it'll go on both axes at the same time. So you can kind of just keep going like that. All right, so let's get rid of that. We decline it and let's go ahead and show you the, the uh, I have to hit control T. I'm gonna hit control D, deselect and then control T. And then I'm going to show you the warp tool too. Sometimes this comes into handy. You might need to have something that curves a little bit, uh, especially if you get a lens uh, that you're, if you're taking pictures and the lens has kind of a curve to it, you might need to use like an adjustment like this to adjust these little parts here. So you can see, you can kind of click into here and adjust different parts. You can even make it warp outside of itself. It's sort of like a 3d mesh, if you will. Um, this one's done with Bezier curves. Uh, but you could also actually use a 3D mesh by going to the Puppet Warp and it'll drop a mesh on top of here and you can click, like left click and put a pin down and then you could like put another pin down here and click over the pin and you can actually start warping based on that pin. Uh, so this, I it seems like such an obscure tool but I have used this before to basically uh, image manipulate certain things into a certain shape um, because of you know whatever reasons might be that it's out of shape um, but yeah so this is kind of an interesting tool uh, it does come in handy I just want to show the other kind of tree free transform tools that you have at your fingertips within Photoshop um, but that's it for for this one I just want to show like the crop and the free transform we'll be using these a lot and even on we'll be made like making paths and stuff like that and sometimes you're gonna free transform paths as well so the tools basically work the same uh, even if you're using it on, on paths. Okay, so that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. All right, let's get into this next section. Let's talk about how we're going to convert height maps from simple operations in Photoshop and bring them into Substance Designer. I'm gonna go ahead and just make a new substance graph. Uh, I'm gonna change this to 2048 by 2048. That'll be the size we're working with. And the name of it, I will call uh, PCT for Cl Purdue Clock Tower, panel underside under, underscore zero two, because it's the second one we're doing. And we'll just go okay. And just the defaults is fine for now. Okay, so let's jump back to Photoshop and I'll make a new layer. Just hit this plus here to make a new layer. And uh, if you want to get the black and white foreground and background layer, you could just click on these little black and white boxes right here. And to fill a layer with one of these colors, you can hit um, Alt Delete will fill the foreground color and Control Delete will fill the background color. I use that all the time because otherwise you have to go in here and go to edit fill. And so I'm always using that depending on which ones I'm gonna fill. So let's go ahead and start off with just a white background color. Um, actually, sorry, I'm gonna invert that. Control I will invert it. Let's start off with a, a black one and we'll go ahead and make a shape here. So I'm gonna to go to this shape tool right here, click on this. And right now I have the, the circle out and I'm just gonna hold shift and I'm gonna make a circular shape right here. And then I'll go to another shape. Let's make a triangle. So we'll go ahead and just draw out a triangle and I'm holding shift again. So it's gonna come out to be uh, equilateral triangle. And so now uh, we've got these two shapes. It looks like it made them on the same layer. 
which is fine. We'll go ahead and I'm just gonna control click on this ellipse layer inside of the little window here. So if you hold control, click on that, it will, whatever one of these shapes you have selected, it will go ahead and highlight that with the marching ants, which means it's selected so you can basically um, fill this with uh, a color. So what I'm gonna do now is instead of uh, going and using this edit fill, I'm just gonna hit control delete and oh, we don't have a active pixel layer yet. So we gotta go ahead and make that. And now I will go ahead and hit uh, control delete and it'll fill it with white. It looks like something, okay, our circle's still there. Um, if we wanna fill the circle, the way we need to select this shape again is come over to our select tool and you want the path selection tool, which is the, uh, the black arrow. There's a white arrow too, but that lets you alter individual points on the path. Uh, we're gonna want the black arrow and you're gonna wanna just select that individually. And then we're gonna go ahead and just, we can control click this again and you'll see it'll select this. And then we'll go back up to our layer two and we'll go ahead and hit control delete because our white's in the background. And now we have these two things filled in. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Let me make a new layer because I wanna illustrate something else here. So I'm gonna hit control delete on here. So I have these on separate layers. All right, so we're gonna go back to the triangle. And in this empty area that's in the layers, if you just double click on here, not over the text, of course, but just in the empty area, you can go ahead and pull up your layer styles. They should pop up on your screen somewhere. And in the layer styles, I should be able to go ahead and turn on inner glow. So I'm gonna turn on inner glow. And when I click on this layer here, you'll see right now it's set to white. I'm gonna set it to black. That's usually the default, but I was doing some other stuff with this before. Uh, and I also have it, it's also set to center. I'm gonna put it on edge. Okay. So what this does is this, this basically makes like a gradient that goes around the edges towards the center, okay? Um, the center obviously starts in the middle and goes towards the edges. Uh, this could be very useful too. Uh, I use both of them, but we're gonna start off with just a simple edge towards center. It's set to precise. If I make it softer, it'll be more of like a rounded, but for this one, I want kind of more of a precise panel look, so that'll work better. Um, you could play with the choke, which will kind of ride in or out into the shape. You can play with the size, which will basically, you could see, completely change the way this thing looks. And you can you could do some combination in between to basically get sort of like a, a um, what's gonna be a height map. It's gonna be where the white is, will pop, will pop out, and then where the gradient goes back to the black, that will recede. And you could use this to make a normal map. You can use it for a height map. Um, you can, you know, this is a very, very useful tool. Uh, you could play with the range as well. Like if you want it to be so that it falls right off into the black, uh, that's good for that. Uh, I usually don't play with the jitter, but you know, there's things you can do with that too. Uh, but this this one's not really, because it's precision, it doesn't need the jitter. Um, you can play with the opacity, you know, how much of that it's coming in, like so. Uh, and for this one, I think I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, the reason why I did these on separate layers, why I decided to make it separate layers is that I can go ahead and just copy. I want to show this. You can copy layer style and come to this layer and go paste layer style. And so now we've got that pasted in there, but let's say we don't want it to be exactly the same. Let's say we want to use the softer. So we can just double click on where it says inner glow right here. It'll take you right into it. And I can change this from precision to softer like so and we can mess with the range if we want. I'm gonna probably bring it out a little bit. Let's play with the choke. Let's actually bring this in. And so, you know, you can, there's a there's just a bunch of adjustments that you can do just through these sliders. Maybe something like that. Let's see here. I'm wondering if I can drive this past 250. Can I go 500? No, it only lets you go to 250, so there you go. All right, limitations, limitations. All right, so there you go. So that's what we're gonna do, something like that. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I've got these two shapes in here. Um, 
just deselecting them by hitting Control D. And I just want to look at this. I'm just going to test it. I don't really like this is just to show you an illustration. So we're going to go file. We say save as copy. And uh, I'm actually going to change this to a PNG. And we'll call this uh, height test. So save that out as the height test. Say OK. Um, and let's go to Substance Designer. OK. So in Substance Designer, we're just going to go and find that file. And I'm just going to drag it in. So it's right here. I'm going to drag that in. And I'm just going to hit Link Resources. OK. So let's just show you what we can do here. So by, by default, Substance brings in this normal. You can see there's like a orange dot here. That means that this is a color. And we want to change this to grayscale. So I'm going to bring in this grayscale conversion, connect that, connect that. And then now all of a sudden you can see that we start getting this bump on the surface here. OK, so now I can come over to this normal node and I can drive the intensity up. So it looks more like it's popping off the surface, like a more normal change. Uh, you could drive it past three if you want. You could just dial it in 10, like so. And then you can see how that's looking. OK. Interesting. All right, so let's also look at, this is maybe a decent illustration of how roughness works too. So we'll drive roughness into here. So the white will be more rough. The black will be completely smooth. So as we do this, you can see that as we drive up the roughness, um, you can see it's completely smooth and shiny. And then it's the same until it gets up into the middle here, and then it goes flat. So that's basically how the roughness works. Um, and these are the kind of tools that we're going to use in Photoshop to dictate how this outcome will look. Um, you know, same thing with metal actually works. You know, you could drive that into here. Wherever's white will be metal. Wherever's black will not be. Um, so, you know, you're you're getting like a different kind of reflectance value and a, a different kind of like um, spread of the energy from the lighting uh, based on what's metallic and what's not. And this is sort of the principle that we're going to use going through the rest of this tutorial is we're going to be like basically making things, you know, some kind of value that is going to uh, is going to tell these like what what the final material should look like. I mean, we could drive this uh, into the height here as well. And um, let's see, is it displacing it already? It looks like it kind of is. Yeah, so now we're actually getting this thing really displacing it. We could see it even more if we come to materials, default, and go to the tessellation displacement. Just click on that, and then you'll get your settings over here. Wait for it. There it is. Okay, so you could go ahead and, and change your height scale, like so. You could change your height level, like so. And this will tessellate more, so if you want like a cleaner look, but then that's more more resources on your computer. Um, so it just depends on how fast your computer is. But you can see now that that's popping out past the surface. All right, so now that you understand all of these principles, we're ready to actually get into the next part where we'll actually cut up this material or this texture, turn it into a material, and use some of the techniques we just talked about to make height maps and all the other fun stuff. So thanks for watching, and on to the next.